Alright, where are we at? What are we doing? Alright, well, we got the T pin in. Nice. Connected. And wiggle in the wire, that's what we got. Okay, let me see. Which wire are you on? The left. The power. Yellow. So the yellow one. Do we know, uh, did you pull a diagram up for this yet? Yeah. I want to know what wire that is, if that's the signal or the ground. That's the signal. We tested the other one. The other one's low voltage all the time and it doesn't move. No, not at all. Well, whenever we wiggle it, it moves. Not on ground. Did you wiggle it on ground? Is that my ground? You grab that diagram real quick. I just want to make sure. Whenever it was on ground, it was below zero and stable. Yeah. Um, and then we still have our scanner connected. Is our key still on? Um, we want to do a clear flood crank to keep that thing from starting. Which is pedal to the floor, gas pedal to the floor, wide crank. Right, but if the car starts, we don't over rev it. Right. So, Got it? No. So, fuel injected cars, when the gas pedal or the throttle position sensor is reading above 75% roughly, and you're cranking the engine, the computer shuts the injectors off. So we can keep the car from starting by doing that, but not all cars have that. So we're just going to try it. So put the pedal to the floor, uh, Cager, and crank it. Listen, if it starts, don't let it over rev. Good. Keep crank. There you go. Thank you. But uh, to answer your question, yes, we could disable the ignition, but we would never want to take the plug wires off one at a time. You're taking plug wires off one at a time, or I'm sorry, you wouldn't want to take the plug wires off because you're having that spark with nowhere to go, and you're going to hurt something. Make sense? All right, I know we're in my room, but let's still get our, okay? Glasses. Make sure everybody's got their glasses on, okay, please? All right, so wiring diagram of a coolant sensor. Where's my coolant sensor at? Okay, some tips in reading these. Without looking at the whole circuit, just going down these. Um, that one goes to the computer. Where does this one go? Does it go to a splice? No. This one, that one there. Computer, it looks like. What's it say on that? ECT what? Sensor. ECT sense. And then what's, what's the other one say? What? That's crap. I've never seen that. The ground the computer? Well, well, the the signal and the ground does go to the computer on inputs. What year is this? That shouldn't be listed that way. I'm actually uh, actually surprised to see that. Okay, well, look. Like. <laughs> so our, our wiring diagram doesn't help us on which one's which. So we, let's go back to the voltage reading and see what we have again, which would be the home tab. You were on the scope? Yep. All right, one of the things that, that we're looking at right here, when you see thermistor signals that do that, that should never happen, ever. I don't care what kind of car you're working on. That should be a, con a gradual rise and change in, in temperature and a gradual change in voltage. You never want sudden changes. So we definitely have a wiring slash sensor problem. Which wire that is, I don't know. Our diagram isn't clear. That's our yellow wire. That should not be happening. Show me the same thing on the other wire. So move the T-pin over and unfreeze that picture, and I want to see the same thing. I'll be right there, guys. I'll be right there. I'm sorry. And then, wait, do this, too, to help us. Let's put our digital signal up there. And where's our negative? Where's our black lead at? I don't like that. You got a painted surface. Your battery cable's right there. Let's go to our battery. And we were reading negative 22, and what that meant is the battery actually has a better ground than where you were connected. Uh, so, um, and then the same wiggling. That looks like a steady line of 0 0.01. Nothing. Okay, nothing. So here's what we know. It's not a ground problem. That's my sensor ground. The brown wire, that's my sensor ground. The yellow is the signal. Go back to the signal. Okay. 
And that's what we should see, something steady. We never want to see it changing. Wiggle that now. Yeah, we don't want to see that. All right, so here's the question. Is that the, the sensor itself, the male pins that we're stressing, or is it the harness? We want to unplug that now. That should go to five. And then put your scope back on that pin. And that should be a steady five, and it shouldn't change. Now wiggle that section of the harness again. That means that this is a vehicle. Not because that's either because the plug is loose or the sensor. Let's plug it back. It's steady as you're wiggling that. Let's plug it back in and check it again. What we're trying to figure out is, is again, wait. Okay, you just took that off. Right. Is that probably going to be the pins that are actually... Well, it's a couple options. We could have a loose female to male pin contact that that female, that female pin spread apart because someone was in there testing it. Or we have a wire problem right there. Or we have a sensor problem. That's what we're trying to figure out. So play around with it a little bit. Let me get those guys set up. Tell me what you guys think. Do it. Yeah. What's up, man? You're on the helmet cam now. And it sounds like you're going to break the cavity cam now. And this is Chris, Mr. Anderson. This is Will. And Jeff. And Josh. <laughs> on camera. Yes, folks. Oh, um, yeah, I do. Yes. So, well, this is technically Josh. All right. So here's what today. here's what we need to do with this, uh, and we haven't done anything with secondary ignition, so I don't expect you guys to know what we're doing. And this this tool, this is the um, SIA 2000, right? Secondary ignition adapter is what Snap-on calls it. Um, there's other other pieces that we can use to do something similar, but for a distributor engine, for a distributor ignition, this is the ideal tool. So put color coordinate your leads on the top of the scope would be number there one. There you go, Josh. Do we need this? Uh, no. We will. We may. We may. Uh, so yeah. Right here. We're not getting thrown away. Mm -mm, yeah. And we started with what again? Number six cylinder misfires. All we have. We feel a miss. What yeah. mainly at high RPM is what you said, Jeff. Yeah. Yeah. We had to rub it to find. To really okay. We all hooked up up there. That black lead goes to something metal on the car. Anything. They don't have much room, so hook it up to that brake line over there. All right. The, and the way that this works is um, the negative, there, there's two channels, negative, positive. That's, this is also made for waste spark. And so when we put our coil adapter on here, this is really made for, again, a waste spark system. This would be two negative leads. This would be two more negative leads, two more positive leads, two more positive leads. So I have the ability to read an eight-cylinder engine with eight separate plug wires, you know, on a waste part. But this being a distributor, we only need one of these because there's one coil for the whole system. These are negative firing. The regular conventional ignition systems are negative firing. So I'm just grabbing the coil wire and this lead from this tool goes right right to that okay every single time that coil fires I'm going to send an impulse into my scope now that we have yes we're gonna go scope multimeter hit the home tab just stay right where you're at with the codes go right to the scope multimeter yep and then we want to go the ignition scope Nope. Probe. Yeah, Ignition probe? Is that what it says? Yeah. Yes. All right, now listen. The way this tool is right now, we'll be able to see all the cylinders firing. The problem is we won't know what's what. That's what this is for. That goes to my number one spark plug, which is over there, and that goes to the auxiliary port on top of the tool. If it works, it works. You might want to think about working. A little bit tricky to plug it in. 
I'm going to need a firing order for this vehicle too. I'll come back. Grab me a firing order. I'll come back. Where? What do you guys think? Where are we at? I personally don't know why, but I think the the male connectors yes. are loose or messed up. Just right the at the connector itself? Yeah, like sticking straight out. Yeah. Because whenever I tried to plug it in, it, like it started going, but it was still real sloppy. Like I could wiggle it around. Can I see that, what that connector looks like? Yeah. Was someone in here? Uh, Scott? Nah. It is Scott, right? Yeah. These pins look like they're really spread apart. You sure no one was in here and they were poking around? It wasn't me. Alright, do you have a T-pin? I want to see if I can... Can you hold that light for me? I want to see if I can... Watch close what I'm doing here too, guys. <clears throat> Go between here and here. Pin's too big. I'm gonna need a smaller one. It, it does look to me like someone was in here and it spread this terminal. I need the smaller, smaller one of my T pins. Here, hold that. Don't lose it. We're running low. So when we're back probed here, though, oh, let me see that again. You could you cannot get the signal to drop right with it unplugged. Is that correct? No, yeah, we could. it's that he wiggled around and everything. So that that's telling me then that the hard part is how do you know if that's your T pin that's moving or the wire, right? Yeah. Yeah. What happened? No, I'm losing it. So I'm grabbing the whole harness, trying right there, Ooh. right there. So it's the harness. And I take this, take this tape off of here, and, and tell me what you see inside of here. Okay. Now it could have been my T-pin still, and I was doing that wrong. But I take that conduit off, and that that uh, tape. We'll still tighten those terminals up a little bit. What do we got? Hi. That's my video. Yeah. We caught we caught the car in the copy. Uh, what do we have on the car? Nothing. What we do wrong? Oh, we gotta play it back. We are getting the picture of the waveform. Yeah. Wait, what? Remember? It's not on here though. Or did you save it? We saved it. Do you know how to get to it? Yeah, yeah we already put them on. Oh. We are the new Sweet lady. man, you guys are alright. Um so can I look real quick then if I hit the home tab, data manager, what'd you name the file? I don't see it. I'm I'm guessing you guys did it under the scope multimeter is my guess. Yeah, we did. Sorry. All right, so you see it's a .vss file. Mm -hmm. You will not be able to open that file on a regular computer. You'll need Shopstream Connect from Snap-on, which is a free download from them. Okay. okay? If you would have screenshotted that, it would have taken a JPEG image and it would have, you know, looked similar to my video that you got. All we did was hit that S. And it saved it as a .vss file? Oh. Shouldn't have. Okay, cool. That's a, that's a great capture, guys. Very nice. Oh, you're right. That's a frozen picture. It shouldn't do that. If it's a, see, in other words, like, I can't, oh, no, it's not a frozen picture. That's a saved frame. In other words, I do have some ability here. It's not a JPEG image. I can do measurements. But that's not as useful. It is to an extent. If you want to look at it on another computer, it's not. Yeah. Um, we're going to have to see what settings change with this new update, but that's great. And what that what I look for simply is this. Start at one point where once the amperage has stabilized, start at one point and count six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. 
back to one again, and those all look even. So good news for you is your misfire most likely is not compression related. Okay. How cool is that? Good. That means like all the plugs you took out and engines class and like that looks like a good uh, a uh, a good compression engine. Um, okay. Once we find our misfire on this, it wouldn't be a bad idea for us to take one spark plug out and redo the test so you can see what a dead cylinder looks like. But I don't want to cause problems while we're trying to find a problem, if that yeah. makes sense. So I'm going to stop you guys there. And the next step that I want to do, uh, I need to think about what's the easiest next step on this. Secondary ignition is really going to be beneficial to look at. Um, I'm trying to think of something I can give you while I'm helping them out there and something that will help us. I got it. Look at your wiring diagram and tell me if there's a designated fuse for your fuel injectors. Okay. So what I'm thinking about, similar to what we talked about this morning with the ignition coil on that Ford truck where we can look at all the coils firing at the same time, we can look at all the injectors firing at the same time too, and we can do that from a fuse if there is a designated injector fuse. Okay. We can do that one. We can also do the test light one where we're looking at the, the spark jumping out. Okay. Like I showed you guys that RPM drop yeah. test, that maybe that's the way we go. Okay. Let's uh, look at the injectors first. Grab your diagram, tell me if the injectors have their own fuse or if they're tied in with everything else. What? You guys. <laughs> you making fun of me, Cajun? Uh -uh. Huh? No. Just being silly. Yeah. Don't put it on the What is that? Okay. Why, why is the red trace on? Is that where it was when you guys turned this on? Or yeah, did... we didn't do anything. That's weird. It shouldn't be on the... Somebody was messing around here. That's what we want. That probe. Alright, so what's my firing order on this? Did we find it? Okay, good. Alright, so watch the setup on this. This is, uh, we go, um... One, six, five, four, three, two. Okay, setup. You watching? Where's Matt? Or not Matt. Sorry, I, Matt, I had Matt last time had a big, big red beard, so you have to forgive me for that, Chris. You cannot compare me to that other bigger man. <laughs> <laughs> um, I went to, I went to set up, and then I'm going to set up again, and I'm going to ignition, and then I have to tell it what I'm working on. Is it a standard ignition distributor, waste spark, or direct? It is a standard, okay? And then I have to tell it how many cylinders. It's six, okay? And then, oops. Then I have to plug in my firing order, which is what? 165432. You guys follow? Hit exit. And then what I want on my time base, wait a minute. Mission code. This should have. Okay, hold on. I need to go back. You guys went in too far, I believe. Mission scope. What did you pick from here? Somebody accidentally picked something. What I, what I generally want is a parade. And when you think of a parade, you think about like fire trucks going past like in a row, you know, parade pattern is that's what, I want to see all the cylinders in a parade pattern across the screen horizontally. That would be parade. That's my favorite view of a secondary. From there, now we should have our firing order. One, six, five, four, three, two. Start it up. Hopefully we set this up right. And our focus would be this number six, and initially it, it looks pretty, pretty good. But right now it's not misfiring though either. Exactly. Stay out here. <laughs> I I just saw a problem on that, and the way I treat ignition systems for. Rookies is how many of you guys remember Sesame Street? Too young. Too young. Too, how old are you? 30? 20. It's too young for Sesame Street. Sesame Street? Alright, one of these kids is doing its own thing. Remember this TV screen? You got like three kids skateboarding and one kid riding a bike. It's like which one of these kids is doing its own thing? Look at those patterns. Watch the number six on a snap. Get over there so you can see. Can you see it? Watch it. Hold on. I'll tell you when I see it. I didn't see it yet. I had it that one time. 
That is the number six right there, right? Right there. Just saw it. Now go back and find that for me. You have a secondary problem, which is good news for you. And I know you have a new cap, a new rotor, and plugs and wires. You have a secondary problem. I just saw it. No. Yeah. You find anything? No, I... Really? Look all over that wire. Okay, turn that back on. Yeah, just hit the screen. Can you uh, get that out of here? No, I guess it's okay. Where's it cheaping at? It could have been... How loose it is in there. Wait a minute. We think it's a connection into that. Because that feels loose. Alright, sometimes you can have... Believe it or not, sometimes the wires can break inside of the insulation. We might want to get a different probe so we get better readings here. This should be five, and it's not. We totally are missing our our reference now, right? Yeah, we have nothing there. So this wire is broken. Where? Where is this broken at? I believe you have a broken wire inside of this insulation. Right there. Is it at the pin? It is. I think you're right. Yeah, I'm, look, I'm, I'm moving it. I'm moving it right right there yeah. oh, it's much better that's actually better turn that off for a second right we're seeing that break up right there I agree with you we have a bad connection right here that wire is probably broken right at the terminal is there any way right there if that was solid if those wires were attached, I wouldn't be able to do that. All right, so what we want to do, we can fix it. We want to pull this insulation out carefully, and then we want to release this pin. The release is going to be, where's your smaller pin at? It's okay. Still want the light out? Uh, no, you're good. The release is going to be on the top side of this. What we want to do is put a pin inside. Sometimes these are a real pain in the butt to get out. And we may just look for a connector and wire a new connector in, but sometimes we don't have that option. I need to get this pin out. Go see Karen. She's got pin release tools. Dig this piece out. Don't ruin it. And Karen has some... Uh, tell her we need a... Um, a tool to take a pin out of a connector. She has like two of them. One's green and one's red. Uh, oh, my desk. Alright, well this was our understanding. Hang on, let me get him a tool slip. Okay. I need tool slips up there. Yeah, right there. I can read it. Alright, this was our understanding. Refresh my memory. Where are we at again? What are we doing? You told us to find a fuse for the injectors. Oh, fuse for the injectors. Yeah. Thank you. All right, so we pretty much are doing the opposite of what you told us to do yesterday. Is from what I'm understanding. It's the same it, diagram. Isn't it? Yeah. That's fine. Your injectors are here. Right. We already know our answer then. Right. Everything comes off of that. Mm -hmm. Are the ignition coils on this? Yeah. Um, um, that. Are the coils? These these are my coils. Yeah. Do the oh, coils? Yeah. Place. Not, uh, this, this top bit. Top comes off the oxygen. Okay, so hold on. Do we have this entire circuit mapped out? Injectors? Do we miss anything with this place that powers the computer? That powers the computer. What's that one? Evap. That's our evap. And then what's that one? Intake manifold. Okay, cool. Wait, intake manifold what? Ground or control. control. Okay. That's a tuning valve. And then that's the power relay. As long as the coils aren't on this circuit, what's that? Ignition coil top ah, center. Darn it. I thought these were the coils. They're not. Those are shift solenoids. The ignition coils are on this circuit. So here's the thing. If we were to put in, what I wanted to do, is take this fuse out, put an amp probe, or put a jumper where the fuse is, and put the amp probe around there. Problem is, if I do that, the coils are going to be firing. At the same time, the injectors are going to be firing, and it's going to be a muddy picture. Meaning that's not going to be the, the way we want to do this. 
so I was hoping for an easy way to do the injectors. There is not. We can see what it looks like, but I don't think it's going to help us much. Let's try it anyway. So you guys will get a good perspective. We need to find that fuse. What's that say right there? Battery, Battery junction bolt. And what number is that? 28. 28, 15. it's a 15 amp. Yep. You want to wait for Jess. I know she wants to go smoke a cigarette. Well, you guys can fill her in on what you're doing. Find that fuse, and then you're going to put this in its place. It's going to be a smaller one. Just so you know, look, your amp probe is going to go around this. That's going to go where your fuse goes. You're going to change your scaling on here. You're going to go to a 20 amp. Okay. Hit 3 0. Set that up on a 20 amp setting now. 20 amp setting. Yeah. Okay. I want to see your pattern when you get that set up. Now, would that be another pattern that we can use for our. Uh, Absolutely. Absolutely. What's the word, man? There it is. We could have shut this off. You should have said something. We went through a gallon. Well, you're, already. you're looking at a frozen picture. Nah, I ain't frozen. I shouldn't have to tell you. You can shut the car off to look at a frozen picture. You don't like shit, man. Yeah, yeah. I let it run out of gas anyway. All right, you see this real goofy looking firing and spark line? This, uh -huh. So, where's that stylus at? This would be the energy release uh, in the coil before the current starts to flow. So just to give you an example, like that right there is about 12,000 volts. Uh -huh. And that's the release. And then the rest of this is the current traveling across the spark plug. And you look at that guy right there. That is either a plug wire, a plug, or a distributor cap problem. And, and I don't really have an easier way to tell you uh, what to do with that other than to move the plug to a different cylinder, move the wire to a different cylinder, and monitor that again. Sure, and if it stays it. on the number six, then it's the cap. And, and uh, those are known for cap issues, the cross firing inside the cap. Brand brand new cap. Truck, yeah, yeah. Let you I know it's a brand new cap. I'm telling you, on this design, I've had these bad right out of the box. Puppy's died, remember? I know what I'm going to do. What are you going to do? Engine. I'm going to change it off. Or well, I think for I right think out. I think an easy one to do is switch the number six plug wire with the number four, which is right next to it. Switch them down there. Switch them at the cap, and let's redo this capture. We can at least eliminate the plug wire. Is this one of the things that we should screenshot and have on our? Yes, USB? that's a great screenshot. Yeah, here. We that's the second. One. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I already took one. All right, good. Okay. Yes. Well, we got to hook up the. USB. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. You got to show us how to do that. I, I, I can we do will. that. We'll okay. do that later, but we got to do this shit first. Anna, you said seven twenty, and then do we crank it? Uh, we're gonna have it running. It's up to you. We can go through the wheel well and switch those wires down there and switch them up top. Or and look, if this is my vehicle, I, I'll probably do what you just said, which is plugs and wires and cap and rotor. And I know your cap and rotor is new, but I just put no, the I take that. In, I you know what? The rotor in the other day when you told me it might be the rotor. Oh, okay, so same issue. He's not, he's not but, maybe that's the rotor. What about the cap? It's the cap the, is brand new the, too. Brand new from when? When they put the engine in. Right. It's not brand new. Yeah. That cap, it's, that cap's been on this engine since this engine was put in. Yeah, which was, I've been driving my truck for like, what, a little over a month now? So Alright, I've seen these caps You're bad the right out of the box. I've seen, I've seen the caps bad right out of the box. I don't like to be a parts changer, and we have time. It's one o'clock. We have time to, to figure out exactly what that is. Let's figure it out. You're the owner, so... I don't know. Sometimes it sucks. Yeah, and sometimes, sometimes they'll fight you. And sometimes the adapters that sh that they give you don't work. And the T pin's really your best friend. That's too fat. Is, you, is there another one she gave you? This freaking helmet cam's like hurting my head. Bad. It might help if you use the cam without your hat. I know. I can loosen it up, but then it moves around. I need it to be tight so it doesn't move. I can't even get in there with this. Let's see if we have a, a connector for that. I might have one. Um, uh, the reason I'm, we're going to change direction is that 
this test is not going to help us anyway. This is something we need to learn how to do. We can play with this after we find this miss. Start this up real quick. Where's my test light at? We didn't see it up there. Thank you. Yeah, I didn't see it. It's right here. Come up here, Jess. Is that alright? I call you that? Jess? Jessica? Jess? Alright. Um, when we do this R RPM drop test, a couple things I want is I want a vehicle that has a dead miss. And I can feel this one. Like this one, I mean, that's pretty consistent. Number two is I don't like to go right to the battery with this. I can. Ultimately, that's where it's going anyway, the spark. But um, I just don't like sparks near the battery. And if there's an air gap there and you have a spark over there and the battery can explode. Um, just being ultra cautious. I just want to go to something metal. It really doesn't matter what. And now this test light, I'm not looking for it to, to light. It's an incandescent light. All that spark is going to do is go right through the bulb and right, right to the, the block. Okay? Um, and then when we do it, we want two things. One, we want to listen to the RPM. And two, we want to watch the spark. It's actually every so often missing even worse. You hear that? You can even hear it. Now, normally we would start with scan tool and, and figure out direction, but we can't communicate with this now, so this is what we're doing, right? Yeah, no, listen. But more importantly, well, not more importantly, um, also, with that, I heard RPM changes. That yeah. cylinder's contributing. Next one. Always keeping the test light closer than my hand. There is no change yep. in RPM at all. We got good spark, but there is. Listen no. to the listen to the engine. Forget the spark sound. No drop it. We want it to change. Our we absolutely do because what we're doing, Jess, is we're we're taking that that spark away from that cylinder. We're preventing it from firing, so that means that that cylinder, because there was no change, is not firing. Okay. Makes sense? I'm sure it was a miss fire, a five, and that's a five. Is it? Okay. Next. Uh-oh. I don't hear that one changing either. So she got a multiple feed in. Um, anytime I see that and I have two dead cylinders up front, I'm thinking, are these plug wires backwards? Uh, is that possible that these are backwards? Possible. This has been missing since you... Uh, if we, we can do that. Go ahead, that's so let's, do, let's do the rest of them first. Let's take a listen. Listen. Yeah. Listen. Good spark too. Mm -hmm. Okay. Those two are not contributing. The first thing I would do if I was in the field seeing newer plug wires on this, someone was here potentially, you reversed them. Probably not, but it's worth a shot. Shut this off. So how long would you hold the light to the... Like, I've seen how you were holding it up. Well, may, two, twofold. One, I want to see how far it jumps. And two is I'm listening for the RPM changes. And okay. so as I'm going back and forth, it was more me listening to the yeah, engine it drop it then. than it was look, paying attention to that anymore. Okay. Now, if it pops and bangs and pals, then we'll know that we're wrong. Okay. Right? Now, the other thing, though, too, is... We don't want to rush it and say, okay, it's not a fix if it doesn't um, work because those injectors are probably firing and those plugs are soaking wet. Ford's pretty decent at shutting the injectors down with a miss. Um, start the back up. I can't believe you've been driving this thing for a year with four cylinders. 
You, your your life is about to change. Yeah. <laughs> so don't don't jam on the gas. But look, some some people are opposed to this test. Why? I have no idea. I think I, I mean that was ultimately right. I mean, we have a car that won't communicate. That's fine. It's a whole separate issue, and, and you got a dead miss. Attack it for what it is. If it's a constant miss, use what you can. Um, there was other ways to find that. I have a video I want you guys to watch tonight. Okay. Ford Escape 3.0 misfire. Type Ford Escape. I think I, I think is that the two part one? I think I started watching it. No, it's one part. Okay. Okay, and I show you other ways to identify uh, wires that are mixed up. But but man, that's great. Now, let's let, let's redo these two so you can hear it. Listen. You hear it? Maybe not as strong. Again, those plugs might be a little bit wet. Listen. Yeah. Absolutely. Wow. Absolutely. You know my car parked into the garage because of that. Well, you and should. And killed my cat you because should. of that. You should work them now. Now listen. Um, the reason before that these ones were making more of a difference, we had two cylinders that weren't firing. As we're disabling these ones, how many cylinders are we are we actually not firing on? Three. So let's listen to these ones now, just maybe, because we didn't hear as much of a change. Listen. So it's not it's not as strong. Why? Because when we were disabling these ones, those two weren't hitting either. You're good, man. I, I can't believe that. That's crazy. It makes me want to punch this dude. Uh, but doesn't that make you all say? If I, if I was at a garage right now and I walked into that garage, that's $70 in my pocket. See you later. Have a nice day. <laughs> yep. Yeah, um, we have a little bit of time. If you guys want to try to grab those injector patterns, I would love to see them. If you can. Please. That again. And you know what? Um, yeah, watch that video because there's other ways that we can find stuff like that. Uh -oh. <laughs> Sometimes you get lucky. Yeah. <laughs> It'll work on it. What? Check it out. Please explain how to start with this one kind of Oh. Matter of fact, I, I ain't going to go bad at it. Anyway, it stayed with the number six? Yeah. What did we switch? Four and six. Uh, what did we switch? Just the wire. So we know it's not the wire. So it's either a plug or it's the distributor cap. So can we switch plugs? Yeah, absolutely. And we can do it through the wheel well. It's not saying we, but you walked away saying it's not. It's not fun. It's not fun. But you see the same pattern on the number six after you switch the wires, and you switch them up with the cap too, right? All right, good. You'd be surprised how many people switch them down below and not up at the cap. He did. I'm not gonna lie. I touched up every part. Switch the plug, man. Take the number six out and pick a different plug that's easy to get to. If it's if number two is easier, you can go through the wheel. Well, it's not bad. Get a jack underneath here. It should take you. It should take you ten minutes to swap plugs. We don't have to swap them back. If it moves to the number four or the number three or whatever, we can leave it there until so you get a replacement. Hey, this way. Listen, this way. You know, you can go to the store literally and go buy one spark plug. I think I have it. Okay. Well, let's move. I just, I'd love to see it. Okay. Are you guys? Go see Karen. Go see Karen and get two heat shrink butt connectors. Okay. Heat shrink. You want the little red ones? The heat shrink butt connectors. Those are sweet. Yes, they are. Part of that, so we can see how much of a jerk I was. <laughs> so we were, we were just talking, and you've had this problem for a long time, yeah. and I blew you off three days in a row yeah. when you were in basic electrical like six months ago. Yeah. <laughs> so you've been driving around with switch plugs. You could save me back for all the gas I wasted. No doubt, <laughs> wasted hundreds, hundreds of dollars. Yeah. I feel freaking I feel like horrible. Miles to go. You you came to me three days in a row. I don't believe I you. Swear I swear. I didn't tell you no three days in I a row. I remember coming. that. It was like three, what, maybe four. What, days. I wasn't reading. But wasn't it? I, I was. Pro I don't think I was BSing you. I'm sure I was. No, swapped. you were really busy. You okay. Could, yeah, you were definitely busy. It's okay. How did you guys figure it out? 
with a test light, RPM drop test. With Dan or what, Austin? No, man, it really, it really was just a basic. I've never seen a test like that. But it, it was just a basic RPM drop test. It wasn't anything that makes me like super smart. It was none of that. It was just basic, basic stuff. I mean, I'm disappointed that. I didn't help you sooner. I, I mean, feel, I would have never. I, I mean, horrible. this thing's been in garages multiple times. I would have never thought That's crazy. that was it. Uh, I guess the only reason that was my first thought is I, I like to not work. So my first thought is how can I make my life easy? And and I'm thinking if I got two cylinders right next to each other and they're both misfiring, my next thought is those. Pl let's just switch them and see what happens. Just because I don't feel like working anymore. Now because it was like that for so long, with the pack. Uh, no, the coil pack would be fine because we have a path for that spark to go. And by the way, that's why I was popping and banging. Our timing was off for for those two cylinders. You're firing at the wrong time. Um, but I the, guarantee it's because how they're set up is one wire goes like this, yeah. like this one goes in the middle. Because I started kind of hoping, but I noticed that first. Yeah. I'm like, oh, it's simple. Yeah. So that's probably just what they wanted. Well, the, the, the bad part here is your cats could be melted down oh, again. Yeah. You already went through a set of cats. Now, Fortunately, Ford, though, once they identify a cylinder misfire, they'll shut the injectors off. So imagine for a second here, if we would have been able to capture the injector pattern, what we would have been seeing is two missing ramps on our waveform. You know how we drew this morning the coil firings with the missing number six ramp? We would have seen four injector firings and two missing ones, potentially. What path are you going to go down? toward the injector. Yeah. Remember that when we get to fuel injectors in this class, we'll talk about that variable, and I call it, in my book, I call it intentional shutdown. In other words, if you're ready to call a driver as being bad in a computer, there's one more thing you have to think about, and it is intentional shutdown of that driver. So for Fords, for, for these, uh, the, the quick test is to shut the car off and restart it. On initial startup, they'll never shut them off. They'll only shut them off after the misfire is re-identified. Does that make sense? Yep. If your ramps appear... I'm confused about how it can turn it off. How does it turn off the fuel injector and fuel injector is to drive? Because you have six different injectors oh. and we can shut one of them down uh, and the other one's okay. still fire and we have fuel. Yeah, so that's kind of how the, some of the eco cores work like that. Yes, it's similar. We're shutting the injectors off, but we're doing something with the valving on those too. It's more than just the injectors. They're they're doing things with the valves and holding them closed, so the so we're not having those forces of compression opposing. Opposite exactly. Yes. All right. So um, this we just I'll be right there. We just need to find that fuse, and I can't. I need glasses, man. Twenty-eight. Fuse number twenty-eight is a fifteen amp. Yeah, that was the one we had. Are these numbered? Yeah, they're all numbered. Where's 28 at? They don't know. It's right here. Ah, okay. And then, it, it should be that, huh? Yeah. The one that you had out. And that definitely did not look like, I mean, we pulled that fuse out. If that, that car should shut off. If that's the, truly the, uh, if that was truly the coils and injectors, that would immediately shut it off. Shut off. So that so, the blade shut off is still. No, that might be the fuel pump potentially. I mean, I know there's an effect, but you saw me pull the fuse out. The car is still running. Yeah. There's no way the car is running if that's the right fuse. Just... It's the wrong fuse. I don't care at this point with this. We can learn that test on another car. Um, I'm good with where we are on this right now. Okay. If you guys want to, you got some time. You could pick like um, to get another waveform, some practice. Go to your home tab. You're good. Guided components. This is going to be on this car, U.S. domestic. And then what I want you guys to do is let's go fuel injection and let's pick something easy. Uh, let's go uh, TPS. Just go to the throttle position sensor. It says throttle control system. It shouldn't. There we go. Okay. And we want DC voltage. <coughs> Follow your prompts. It shows you how to hook up the meter and shows you what it should look like. Get me that waveform. That now to do that, the car is off, the key is on, and all you're going to do, open the throttle, oh. right here, okay, and let it go, and that'll give you that kind of waveform. Snapshot that picture, that'll be a, one of the ones I want you guys to have. Okay. 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 What's the word? We switch them? 
Yeah. Still sick. Ha ha. Is that actually it? Yeah. What's, is, what's, why does four look different than the rest of them also? Well, remember that when you're doing snap throttle tests, you have a lot of turbulence going on and you're looking at one event. One event. And that's still... And, and, yeah, I don't like that at all. I'd like to see that one more time. Of that's, all right. That actually looks like a lean misfire. Sure, you want you want to go ahead, screenshot it. Even though they all pretty much look the same. Over? Hold on. Yeah. Guys, so. What's that? I'm just there to me. <laughs> nice. Right. You ready? Yeah, snap it. Um, now, the, keys with, the key with snap throttle is letting it idle all the way back down and then doing a quick snap because that's when we like get that mad rush of air in that right cylinder. Yeah. Still didn't see it. Where did we move that plug to? What cylinder? Four. We traded six and four. Okay, good. It's four. It moves with the plug. Yes. I saw it, I swear. Yeah, I did too. Go back, I think. Oh, jump off, I did too, man. Man, I swear I saw it. Now it should give me a turn on the floor this time. Try it again. Hold on. Bro, we'll go check. Oh, he's trying to do it. I saw it. I, I, I right thought there. I saw There it was, right there. I just saw it again. Right? But they all peaked there. Yeah. That moves with the plug. That is a bad spark plug. Number four, bad plug. Now, was it worth switching the plugs around? Huh? One bad, as opposed to what? Spend another hundred some dollars on plugs, wires, caps. Dollar fifty, baby, right there. Dollar fifty. Change that plug. Number four, so on. Are you guys with me on that? Snapshot yeah. that. That's a good one too. And take your notes when you guys put your put these together. Be like, first one is original misfire. Number six. Second one is after switching wires. Third one, after switching plugs. That's three. Well, not related. What are these? Uh, that is a vent for your differential or your transmission. So you submerge it under water, we don't get water in the differential. Should they all be facing up? Yes. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's probably gone over this anyway, but why is three taking so much more? Um, again, it's one event, and if we were to do multiple snaps and watch them, they will not always be the same. Uh -huh. So we don't want to overanalyze one particular capture of a secondary is the best I can give you there. A lot of the, well, the height is determined by the resistance of the spark plug. And the resistance of the spark plug is the gap, sorry, not the resistance of the plug. The air gap is what determines the height of that spike. What's going on within the air gap is different cylinder to cylinder. You got different pressures and different, you know, we shouldn't have different ratios, but there's a lot of characteristics that you're not going to see ignition patterns that all look even and uniform. So that's almost a day plug, but not exactly. Correct. Plug. Yep. Under load situations, as you described, that's going to miss more. Cylinder pressures are going to affect that and change that characteristic. Okay, where are you? you got a bad spark plug. That's a good capture. Nice, nice, nice dog. Good job, fellas. Yep. All right, you know what you're doing? You know, that's why I'm waiting for you. Wars are, okay. Oh, we're, well, here. we know, what, we know I need what a pair. To do. We want to make sure that it's what you want us to do. Give me a pair of wire strippers. Uh, uh, or, 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 strip yeah, you, yeah, that's all. Yeah. We were just you waiting good? on you to make oh, sure. No. Yeah. Uh, we don't need to heat shrink it. You're just using a butt connector that this is. Oh yeah, this crimp. These are the good crimp connectors with the heat shrink on. So strip your wire back. You don't need all this extra wire. Yeah. Right? Maybe cut it, cut it like here. Yeah. Strip it and put it on, man. Okay. You guys good with that? Then you know how to put those on. Okay, perfect. Yeah. It is showing on our screen that we have three connectors. No, you got three pins. Three pins, but well, we only have two. No, you don't. You're looking in the wrong place. Where were you at? We were right there. All right, that is, here's what you do. That's an idle air control valve. I know that because I'm looking at the throttle shaft, which is right here. And so that runs all the way through the other side, and that puts my TPS right here. Ah! So your connector's on the back side, which means it's going to be a little bit more difficult to do. And uh, we can do it. 
still if you want, or we can do it tomorrow. It being 1.30, we, you want to do it? All right, you were just on the wrong component. All right, nice job today, guys. So that's the idle air. Yeah. That's the idle air control valve. If you want to, hey, you know what? That would be an easier one to do. Let's do that one. Go back. Uh, fuel injection. IAC. Idle. Do that's your, the valve. Yeah, do that one. And then do the signature test, that one. Okay. Well, you got the band. And then this way, it's something easy. It's right up top. The TPS you can fight tomorrow. That's what the waveform should look like. Tells you how to set it up. Cool. Yeah, that's what that thing is just to unplug off the car, right? What's, what's that? It's okay to just unplug it off the car, or is there a certain... Well, um, okay, good. Um, anytime... Saying, yes, on so this older of a vehicle, we're not worried about it, but here's what you do. Get in the habit of doing it. It's still identified as a 95 Chevy. Hit the change vehicle icon. It says, scanner communication must stop. That's what I want. Okay. okay. And now, no active vehicle. We are completely safe to... Unplug okay. from the. You're good. Now, when you turn this off, you turn this off like a regular like a computer. regular computer. Yeah. yeah. You guys show us how to get the pictures off. I will. We'll do that. Well, inside. nice job today, guys. Oh, that was awesome. Yeah. Nice job today, guys. Nice job today. Yeah, like that was fun.